Well, there's a three little fur people eating their food right there. And there's Feather. And just in time, got the first box of Chewy shipment in. <laughs> so, okay. You know what I do is, um, with that with the kittens, um, I give them the regular cat food, but I mix water with it to like soften it up and kind of chop it down a little bit. So it's kind of like a gravy. So they got no problem eating that. Yeah. <laughs> You're getting big pretty quick. It's amazing. You can watch them grow like every few days. You just notice they're bigger. <laughs> and Feather being a kitten herself and a mommy, I think, uh, I don't know how much bigger she's going to get. Maybe she's not going to be a very big cat. I remember my cat, my cat Goldie, that cat is not that big. He's, he's a lot smaller than the other guys. He's just a smaller cat. <laughs> but we got some stuff here. I got more coming, I think. Yeah, I do have more coming. So I got the dry stuff, but I like getting them a lot of this. Some of these boxes got a little crushed up, but got a lot of the treats, the chicken, um, perfectly chicken. And I know they usually like this stuff. You know, it's uh, liver liver and chicken and I think liver's got pretty good nutrients in it just by what it is you know and I think that's the parts that they throw away anyway they don't put it in with the people food but liver's got some good stuff they love the liver and of course got a bunch of treats there's some more stuff coming now there's um I noticed some dry stuff I don't know what else I got <laughs> But smart getting it from these guys because it's, it's, it's heavily discounted, right? Right, little right, little girl. Get some dirt on your face, come feeding that food. She's a good. Yeah, you're not pregnant, and it's good. <laughs> At least I can tell. Uh, you know that one gray one is probably the shyest one, or maybe paws. I'm not sure, but they walk away get too close. Usually I can get there pretty close with I mean he had enough because that whole plate was full. So <laughs> she didn't have enough. She eats a lot man. She eats a lot of food. And I know Boots is coming by every night because he's feeling that that thing's going down. He likes that dry stuff. And of course we got our Confederate flag out there, forest. You know, I wish everybody would be flying that thing, uh, but you know, what I wish, you know, <coughs> it's got to be willing by people, you know. You know what the problem is? They've been uh, smearing, it, smearing those symbols with disinformation campaigns for so long, people have shied away from it. So, and by the way, I found out I have another, um, uh, uh, ancestor through my fourth great grandmother's side direct lineage that goes back to the uh, American Revolutionary War um, so I was trying to put an application in for the uh, Sons of American Re Revolution and you know they need they need like original documents you know and there was one link that was missing right there at the end even though it's like heavily documented from both sides of the family you need, you can't use a grave site, you can't use things like that um, for, it's got to be like, and the census records weren't really that great at that time, so I found um, a Daughters of the American Revolution application that links uh, another ancestor, so actually I have uh, four direct great-grandfathers, um, two of them with my last name, they go back to South Carolina in the uh, American Revolution of 1776, uh, mainly in Marion's uh, brigade, General Francis Marion. Um, you know, I'm not trying to say that's something I did, you know, but it's just something that went on that, you know, that's part of my lineage. But, um, you know, when I think about it, the Confederates that were only a couple, gen two or three generations later, I mean, this is pretty much fresh on their mind. Oh, my great-grandpa, he fought for independence. My grandfather fought for independence. 
and um, you know that was on their mind in South Carolina so you know Abe Lincoln did he's, he, he got a whole bunch of imports in from put them on you know didn't even speak English or coming out on the ship and in exchange for citizenship gave him a rifle and told him to go down or down south and kill Americans hmm think about it that's really what happened and today they're making it sound like this, the war for southern independence was bad it wasn't like the war for taking over the country you know it was just a war for southern independence right that's all it was um, when you think about it you know the implications of you know say it was your grandfather who was fighting for American independence or your great grandfather that would be pretty much fresh in your mind wouldn't it so you know, here it was the same type of thing, only even worse with more more taxes. Plus, then when a Yankee invasion happened, same like the British invasion. What do you think was going on in their minds? You know, not what they're telling you today, of course, right? Makes it a lot more clear because then I'm looking at my ancestors that fought in the Confederacy. Just just a few generations before that, they they were all fighting in um, the. Um, Two are my last name, and two different ones are different last names, but they're direct lineage. Um, and, you know, direct, direct. I mean, it's a grand, great grandfather. So there's a little gray one down there. See? Yeah. Actually, that one's pretty shy. But, you know, you think about it. Think about it. It's almost like uh, you have people in your family that fought in World War II against the Nazis. And then you say there's another war that comes up and you fight them again that you think is the same kind of people that are Nazis. And, you know, years from now, then a hundred years after that, they're telling you some other reason that you fought for. See? That's, that's kind of like what they're doing with the Confederates. You know? Confederates were fighting against uh, basically centralized power and fascism basically at the, at, in out of Washington, D.C. I don't want to tell you that today. It's uh, talk about defamation of character. <laughs> That's serious defamation of character. You would think um, you know the pro-confederate or uh, heritage groups would be you know more on that because um, um, you know instead of I don't know it's just like it's, it's just wrong to say that. I mean it's almost like saying like I mean it's in the comparison I mean say for instance you know 1776 was a just war you know according to the powers right <laughs> that are in power today in the media or at least most of them anyway some of them say no and then you know later on war for independence they'll tell you it's over something completely different but it wasn't it was over uh, the taxes that are even worse than 1776 but say, for instance, you're, you know, it's fresh in your mind. Say you have relatives and stuff that fought in World War II, and you, you fight, you know, you have another time that comes up, say there's fascism someplace, and you, you volunteer, and you fight against the fascist, and, um, and defeat them. Or say you get defeated, <laughs> and then the fascists will tell you, you know, that's really what happened. You know, the centralized powers got defeated this last time, you know, it's 1865, right? They, the centralized powers won. They defeated the, the Americans this time. You know. And how did they defeat them? They brought in a lot of people from the outside, granted them citizenship and gave them a rifle, told them to go kill the Native Americans that have been, um, that founded this country. And, you know, fought in 1776 they told them to go kill the descendants of those people that might be a repeat of what's going to come up that's you know, on the the truth that's I don't know how I would figure it that's how they would get the manpower right so beware I can only see so much I'm a pretty shrewd individual and uh, pretty uh, pretty much understand the demonic forces you know <laughs> that I could pretty much predict their shrewd maneuvers, what they would try to do, and what they would have to do. So, but anyway, that's a little Dixie down there, the one with the paws, the white paws, four white paws, is paws, and this one here is Onyx, a little black one, and uh, feather is Mommy, with a big feather duster tail. So, anyway, yeah, I'm going to see if I get into the um, Sons of the American Revolution, which kind of opens up. Um, there's probably more Confederate ancestors I have in South Carolina that I found out that 
I could trace another lineage that would have been the brother of my fourth great grandmother, fourth, fourth great grandmother. Um, since now I, I know her lineage back to the American Revolution with her father's names, um, I could probably figure out if she had any brothers, and more than likely if she had any brothers, she was they were fighting in the Confederacy. So I probably got, I know I got a lot more Confederate ancestry than just my last name because um, when I looked in the mother's maiden names, um, I also found Confederates. Um, but yeah, you know, today they make it sound like a dirty word, unless you know people really understand it. But it's not really, it's not true. It's not true at all. It, so anyway, <laughs> this little gray one here is <laughs> finally, yeah, that was the last one to come to the plate, and then um, it's gonna really scoff down the food now. That one's pretty shy. The one with the white paws and uh, paws and the gray one, Dixie, are his two shyest ones. I don't know. Dixie might be the shyest one of all of them. This guy here, Onyx, he's pretty rambunctious. And he's a little bit bigger than the other ones. This paws. He's going to be playing. So. But plenty more cat food. Look at little Onyx. Onyx is coming right up to me. See that? <laughs> right, little baby? Huh? Getting friendly now, aren't you? This one comes right up to me now. Right? Yeah, I'm gonna go feed the other guys inside. Let's see if I can put my finger there. You okay? Huh? What's that, huh? You okay? Yeah, could I touch you? What's that, huh? Yeah? Oh, you're okay. Hey, you're a little friendly guy, aren't you? Huh? Or girl? Right? Yeah? Just a little baby, huh? <laughs> There's Dixie coming over. Dixie, when they, when they get fed, they get a little more adventurous. Now you know I'm giving you the food, right? So you're okay. And see the eyes? The eyes are fine. That was when we thought there was something wrong with the eyes. He, he or she just stuck her face in a spider web. That was a few weeks ago. Right? Hmm? Yeah, huh? <laughs> okay. Little baby. Tell a little baby. And see, this one's there. They're starting to clean themselves, too. This one's doing her own cleaning. So, right? <laughs> Looking good. Looking good. Oh, yeah, you're getting friendly. This one's probably going to look a lot like Mama. I think the fur is going to be pretty long. That one down here, Dixie, that's a good name for that one. That's, that one's got some it's got some markings like Boots has. Look at the feather. <laughs> it's kind of funny. It's like uh, it's just like three human offsprings. Um, you got one that looks like the father, one looks like the mother, and the other one, paws, kind of looks like a cross between the two of them. Because he's got the four white paws and the white on the bottom and the breast. But he's, he's still a mainly black cat like his mom, and he's got the paw markings like his dad. And what, this one looks like mom, and the other one, and the other one looks, and Onyx looks like mom, and Dixie looks like uh, Boots. Boots the rebel cat. <laughs> Pretty wild.